Well, good afternoon. Well, it's 42 degrees. That's what uh, Jefferson has written down in his little book. Uh, there's no wind to speak of, and it's sunshiny. So it's a good day. And this parallels uh, some of the good news we have in terms of the law. But people out in California are still suffering because of the, the terrible rains. And uh, we can just hope that spunkiness, government services, wise planning minimizes the trouble. Some people have died. The uh, news that we care about involves, well, the first and most important thing, I think, is uh, Trump. We have had people wringing their hands, waiting upon a decision by the U.S. Court of Appeals, Circuit Court of Appeals for D.C., on the question of whether or not Trump has immunity for what he does, up to and including perhaps killing political critics or anything else that you might imagine that would cause you to tremble, tremble at the notion that a man holding public office, Trump or anyone else, that they'd be able to do that with impunity is just not civilized, nor constitutional, nor lawful. So we waited upon the court to decide and a couple of weeks have passed, and everybody thought the decision would come sooner rather than later. But the decision that's come down is that Trump is no oligarch, no dictator. He is a citizen like everybody else, and he doesn't enjoy immunity from prosecution or the other obligations of a private citizen. In other words, he's exposed to prosecution. And the decision by Judge Chutkin, who is presiding over the federal charges against Trump, her decision was upheld by the court, and soon she may be able to pick a new trial date. Now, Trump has one week to file with the United States Supreme Court papers asking them to overturn this decision. It is my hope that they may not even consider the case. That is to say, by their silence, they may uphold the decision of the circuit court. Now, some thought that the decision was delayed because Henderson was the senior member of the three-judge panel, and she was an appointment of President W. Bush. But, number one, I had not heard of her as an ideologue, and a lot of time has passed since then. And she has an array of cases that belie the notion that she makes her decisions based on her partisan appointment to the court. And it has been said that the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals is a leading court among those in the United States. And the next highest, most important court is the Supreme Court. Now, I said that the Supreme Court might not do anything with the decision, which is to say that they see no reason to take it up because they don't disagree with it. The question then becomes, is our court driven by political hacks or by the law? So will Alito or Thomas lead six people to delay this because that would favor Trump's theory of improving his chances to be elected over Biden and then he'd get in the White House and try to clean up all this messy criminal proceedings. And the alternative 
is that they look at the case and they say they have nothing to add and they issue an order declining a petition for certiorari, which is a petition for the court to exercise its discretion to hear the case. We're going to learn something about the trustworthiness of the court when it is rightfully impugned by its conduct going back, certainly, to the Bush-Gore decision and the overthrow of Roe v. Wade and other matters along the way that reflect more political gamesmanship than legal precedent. We have a critical period here, but the most important thing to garner from this decision today is that the law is alive and well in the United States and that a most significant court in our array of judicial wisdom has decided that no, we, we don't believe in dictators. We don't believe people can rule like this was their fiefdom, that they can just come down with something because they want to do it. No, they're reined in by the Constitution. They're reined in by the laws of the land. And not being a king, they must abide as a civilian when they're asked to give an accounting for their bad practices. So Judge Chutkin has been upheld and Trump is on his way to trial again. Now, of course, we can all be cynical and say, how could this be curtailed? That is the process of an accounting. If the court, say, five to four, six to three, decides to kick this can down the road, they could do it by scheduling arguments and not deciding the matter until June even. And that would complicate any trial schedule to try Trump before the actual election in November, but it's still possible. And I think that the court will not be unaware of this, even in their arrogance, which is the bedmate to political hacks who care more about the predetermined result than they care about the process by which we decide it's fundamentally fair. But I think we're going to see Trump on trial before Judge Chutkin or the DA in New York, perhaps in Georgia. I don't hold much hope for the other federal case in Florida before Judge Luce Cannon. But I think we're in a position where we can deliver to the people a judgment about the guilt or innocence of Trump. I doubt the latter in all respects because we've all lived through and seen why Trump is on the wrong end of indictments, four indictments, two federal, two state. So that's, that's that. The, uh, the second thing that happened today, which I think is a benefit to America, is the enshrinement of guns to be used for whatever purpose people want. And the extreme test of that thesis is the trial in Michigan in which a mother was tried for involuntary manslaughter by really being criminally negligent and neglectful of her son and presenting her gun, uh, presenting her son with a gun that she used to kill that he used to kill for young adults, teenagers. Well, a jury came back today with their decision and they found her guilty for four counts of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of those youngsters who had their lives cut short and 
this boy and with the gun and his parents, both charged with involuntary manslaughter, put a burden on the surviving families that they won't be able to shake their whole life. And this is what teaches us what's important. Not the fetishistic way to have a handgun and to weigh that as more important than the right to life. We're talking about surviving in a safe world that is run by rules and law and not by guns and violence and threats and coercion. We have noticed that the Republicans of late in their leadership seem to have disconnected their humanity from their neighbors and from the original purposes that perhaps brought them into government. And we should not ignore that. We should punish them for it in this sense. Don't vote for them. Don't vote for any Republican even running for justice of the peace. Our nation can't withstand this damage to its core values. And so we cannot allow this conduct to go on. So today we had two very different kinds of victories. A court perhaps took longer than we wished because they knew they were writing an historic document, as historic as the United States against Nixon, and it said, this is who we are for now and all time. And it echoes down the corridors of time to when Nixon did his tricks, tricky Nixon, and Trump found a way to become even more brutal in his tricks and offenses and crimes and traitorous behavior and trading on an office for personal aggrandizement and then lying about everything he's done to avoid the consequences of his criminal and traitorous conduct. So, and the second one is to punch in the face this notion that children are less important than than guns and bullets and death. Our country, just sort of like our religions, and yes, I mean our religions, we have all this scripture that people will say aloud in public proceedings and ignore. That's why I don't find any solace in religion. I do find solace in the, the wisdom of some religions, of some scripture, but you can go back to Aristotle and Plato and Seneca and many people and institutions that give life to a world in which we care for each other, that we know we're all in this together, that we care to give opportunities to help those who need a hand up, to teach, to be there for other people. That's not the world of Republicans. It's certainly not the world of Trump. And by Trump's downfall, ultimately, sometime this year, we will educate everybody else, educate everybody else, that his way is the wrong way. And the right way is to stand by the words in our Constitution and in the laws and to carry on. So... I don't know if because I'll be writing tomorrow, <laughs> if I'll get out for a walk and talk. But right now, I'm walking among my trees in my cathedral of trees. So, hope to talk to you tomorrow. All the best. Good day today. Bye-bye.